Hello guys, how are you doing? It was coming, it is here, the master's guide for dual blades. I don't know what you want. Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall. My love, if you feel like I do right now, don't say you're on the run to the other side. My love. Okay, so since you bros want this video to be longer than I usually make them, I decided to kind of segment this video into seven, I guess, categories. The timestamps are going to be floating around the screen now somewhere, or they're going to be, uh, you know, that YouTube thing when, when you, where you can timestamp your thingies. You know, you know what I mean, okay. And the first thing we're going to be talking about is, of course, the attributes for Assassin or Dual Blades. Now, for Dual Blades, luckily, this isn't uh, really much of a question. If you are starting out to play Dual Blades, I would actually recommend going full toughness, just because it is way easier to learn it, especially if your skills are zero. Uh, I always recommend going full toughness uh, for uh, trying out a new class, it doesn't really matter which one it is except for musket uh, short bow and long bow so if you are going to start out uh, with the dual blades I would really recommend doing that especially if you're not a seasoned player on conqueror's blade or at least go 50 strength and 50 toughness now when you get used to it the play style and the flow of dual blades uh, you should really start focusing on strength maybe you can put a few points into agility just because of uh, the increased armor penetration but I really wouldn't recommend that especially because the armor penetration for slashing does not scale with uh, your ultimate and with other skills you can just use the build I use which is full strength but I'm letting you guys know that there is a possibility of going let's say 90 to 80 percent into strength and 10 and 20 percent into agility but that's only based on your play style and how you are planning to play uh, dual blades of course if you go more into agility you are going to get increased use out of the shurikens and you're also going to penetrate uh, some of the heavy armored hero way easier so there you have it for attributes either go full strength or partially just a little tiny bit into agility those are the two builds and if you're starting to learn the class go full toughness so you stay alive longer so you kind of you know f first you have to learn slow to you know then fight fast that's actually what i do with all the classes as i also said before like Put yourself in dangerous situations so you kind of know the limits of the classes so you kind of test out how useful the skills you have can be in those situations and once you learn that like in two three days it really doesn't take that long uh you're gonna have way way more fun with the class anyway next topic is going to be equipment now, as you probably already know, Dual Blades uses light armor. The affixed attributes, bonuses, whatever you want to call them, you should be focusing on with the weapon is, of course, slashing armor damage and slashing armor penetration. And if you manage to get it full strength or even agility is okay, but you're really looking to just max out your uh slashing capabilities anyway for light armor um if you are playing only assassin with them well actually this works both for uh, longbow and shortbow since they're not in combat anyway uh, the things you should be focusing on is just two as far as i know uh, and that is uh, critical value increase 
and leadership because honestly if you're going to focus on defenses or health it's nice to have it don't get me wrong it's good to have it but you should rather take the increased critical value and leadership because it just comes way more useful for your specific class here you can also see where my attributes are at i am at 114 strength which is awesome 28 agility, 28 armor, and 23 toughness. Okay, now the runes I have been using are Rat Obscure and the Rat Reprisal. The reason I'm using these two runes are because of the butterfly skill, which has uh, really grown on me, and I am i do not play dual blades without it. Um, we're going to go more into detail about that skill later on and all the benefits it offers. And rat, rat Obscure is very good because uh, you can use the slowdown effect when you use the any invisible skill which really helps you better anticipate where your enemy is going to be if you're going to attack again, really helps you out get away, not only from heroes but also from cavalry units uh, whatever is uh, chasing you and it does poison damage and that all lasts for up to five seconds and for the rat reprisal it increases the bleeding rotation by 50 percent for the butterfly and skylark and bleeding damage is increased by 25 percent and that is really good i really thought they were going to do like bleeding rotation is increased by 50 percent but the bleeding damage is decreased like by 25 15 whatever uh those two skills i think are really good i don't see much sense at taking the rat avarice even if you get like 15 kills in a game you know just taking away your damage so you can get healed after you kill someone is kind of counter intuitive for this class because you're just supposed to boost your damage as much as you can so you can go in kill off the heroes and switch back to another one and another one another one you know you're supposed to trophy hunt not focus on healing yourself you can do that uh, with bandages that's that's a no-brainer right there. Agility increase and strength increase is also um, kind of obsolete here because if you got like two more points into agility and armor or strength or toughness or both of them, uh, it is not going to make up for the rat obscura that you can have or rat reprisal. It just does not output enough damage, not nearly, and does not uh, like the armor increase and the toughness increase doesn't mean anything to dual blades so i hope there is no confusion here these are the two skills you should be using for dual blades of course if you are using infiltrator or alchemic vapors and skylark or butterfly if you're not using them then of course there is no sense in using them and you should opt out to agility and strength uh the helmet you could argue that you can go uh the strength seven points uh, increase i did say like that i think every class should use the increase the seven um, points for toughness sorry not strength toughness but for dual blades and for classes that are supposed to be like securing kills if you know what i mean uh, i do think this is an exception i would sacrifice five points of toughness in order to get two more points of strength however this does not have to be a must-have like you can switch out uh, strength or agility increase to have that extra seven points of toughness if you want it if you feel more comfortable with it i just think that having you know like the maximum available damage output for your dual blades is going to be very crucial if you're going to play the class to its full potential next is agility and armor by two points and the last one is of course increased critical value by 30 points like the other skills say i honestly don't like the skills that only offer you bonuses at a supply point or a capture point so i'm not really even going to go into them i i don't even uh, think you guys use them if you do leave it in the comments below i really want to hear your take on why you use those skills but for now we're just going to skip them increase health by three percent after death nearby allies will recover eight percent that is completely useless to dual blades uh bandage healing improved by 25 percent that is also not such a good one because normally with dual blades if you don't really need a lot of health to be effective you can be like zero health 
and still take out a hero without him touching you so if you go down to like 10 percent health and you only heal up to 65 75 percent with your bandages that extra 25 percent is definitely not going to do that much of a difference especially because you don't have that much health to begin with and generally i just think that is way too expensive for dual blades for two points and kind of pointless to have it if you ask me bandage the rotation is reduced by 50 percent and cooldown is reduced by 50 percent uh, i never use this skill uh to be honest i kind of think that skill will only be useful at let's say a uh, long sword because if you use that skill in a in the combination with running and healing it's gonna heal you only for 50 percent and it's going to have a 60 second cooldown instead of a 75. if you use it without the running and heal which is going to make the 60 percent 60 second uh, cooldown into 30 then yes but you have to know that you are giving up the skill where you're running and healing which by my opinion is very freaking useful because when you are running away from someone you can heal up to get that extra hp to save you you can charge into enemies and heal like you, you can just being able to heal and move i think is really uh kind of priceless in conqueror's blade i think it's a really must have but if you don't like it if you don't use it i'm really curious on why and what's your kind of strategy to combat that and you can leave that in the comments below hell next up we have the armor like here it's really a no-brainer like you don't have any skills that would boost your uh, damage here like immune to bleeding and poison for five seconds i think is bugged uh, currently but even if it wasn't bugged like i wouldn't use it except if it would like remove and make you immune to bleeding and poison that would be useful but otherwise you should really go for increased armor by seven uh, points increased strength and agility you could go for draco instead of strength or agility that's uh, up to you up to your preference like uh, as i said before i want to boost my damage as much as i can next we have boots this is really a no-brainer uh, agility by seven points you need the armor penetration for dual blades it's and healing that can be performed while moving next up we have gloves uh here i think it's also a no-brainer you should really go for increased strength by seven points increase all damages by 30 and increase strength and toughness and that is it for the equipment those are the runes i am currently using let me know if you have a different take on runes i would really love to hear uh, if you have like a different approach or strategy uh, for kind of combining the runes together or if you focus more diversely or if you focus entirely on agility or entirely on strength okay so next up we have the skills now i am going to be talking about all the skills actually because for dual blades i all of the skills are actually useful like uh, similar to nodachi it is one of the rarer classes where you can actually use any of the skills and you're still going to do good as long as you know how to use them and the first one is going to be bow shurikens now the best and we're also going to be talking about the skills as if they are fully maxed now the shurikens uh for me honestly are irreplaceable in sieges because they really offer you a supporting factor to deal damage to units which other skills don't except for the bomb now shurikens are really good because they do actually pretty decent damage looking at the fact that it is a ranged attack they do 190 percent of your base piercing damage plus 1.6k and poison the enemy for 300 health per second for three seconds which means that is like 3000 damage raw right there like three to four thousand damage depending on uh, the hero and the poison also slows down the target by 20 percent for eight seconds now this skill for me honestly is very nice when someone is trying to escape on a horse because you just throw the shurikens get that extra slowing effect that you need on the hero fire your alchemical vapors dash toward them 
press E, you knock them off, and then you just spam uh, your attacks uh, with Butterfly, and then your Shuriken's already recharged. You know, and that's that hero is gonna be gone if he's leaded. And if he gets, if he falls or gets off his horse, you just use Marked for Death on him, and it's his Chao Bao, man. Anyway, Shurikens are really good for support, are really good for chasing down uh, heroes because they offer you that uh, ranged uh, throw. Uh, they offer you the ability to not go into combat and still do damage, which is important for dual blades many times. Uh, I often stand uh, back where there are two lines clashing and I throw as many shurikens as I can. That is not my focus. As soon as a hero comes uh, to the front, I do take him on. But as long as they are kind of just staying back, I do keep throwing shurikens. And that is also a very good deterrent, having a dual blades in the front line, throwing shurikens. That is going to make any hero think twice before jumping in. Next up we have Skylark. Uh, this is also a very good one because of the cooldown which is 6 seconds and the very good damage output that it offers. Like you gotta, you gotta know like that it has 250% of your slashing damage and plus 2500 points of slashing damage. That is already five, 5k. Accompanied with every two seconds this deals 400 points of damage to your enemies and the effect lasts for six seconds Which is 1.2 K damage if you are not using the runes. So this skill has like 6 K potential damage which Makes it very useful, but as far as I know the skill does not do a good da a good job at staggering and actually doesn't stagger at all You can also see the animation that the, the guy barely gets staggered uh, This skill however cannot get blocked which is also a very good thing especially when uh, you're up against a shield unit But that shouldn't uh, sorry a shield hero, but that shouldn't really be a factor like the most useful Usefulness you can get out of this uh, skill is when you use uh, it combined with the bomb Or if you don't want to do that, you can just uh, use it combined with... Uh, you can replace Shurikens with Skylark and be more anti-hero uh, Without that support factor and you can either knock the hero uh, down with alchemical vapors and use that when they're on place and when they get up you pop butterfly on them to chase them down because butterfly has a forward push effect uh, that is basically the only kind of situation where i see skylark being useful if, or even like i never tried it dance of death uh it looks really interesting like for god's sakes look at that damage it does 1k percent of your damage and 12,000 points of slashing damage and it removes days and knockdown and it slows down your enemy for 90% for 7 seconds like I think the biggest flaw for this skill is that you can get countered easily because as you can see the skill does not stagger which is a real bummer like if you're gonna do that to a uh, Nodachi uh, he's just gonna throw you on the ground or a uh, like any class that is that can throw you on the ground is going to throw you on the ground so i think this ulti is best used for uh actually best used combining it with a bomb or you just focus on knocking enemies down and then popping abilities like this if you would use dance of that i really see skylark being as a complementary skill uh, to that but other than using Skylark with the bomb or focusing on knocking down heroes or any other combinations like I do not recommend you to use Skylark as a attack on an enemy that is not concussed, dazed, knocked down or, any or anything like that uh, because it is just so easy to counter but it is a very useful skill since it does have six second since it does have a 6 second cooldown and it does crazy amounts of damages. Butterfly is quickly growing to be one of my favorite skills on Assassin. Uh, not just because of the uh, forward push that it offers, the two stage attack that it offers and the bleeding. I like it because you can use it against units, like the attack that you can see is 360. So if you go into a crowd of units 
pop that off if there are no heroes nearby you can pop that off do some good damage do some good bleeding damage uh, use alchemic vapors and you know kind of repeat that process you know kind of jump back uh, throw some shurikens and you can really confuse the hell out of the enemy units so they so your units or allied units have a way easier time at taking them out also if you use butterfly you are going to stagger uh, all of the units that you hit around you so that is like that is like a very useful skill like i would use it in like almost all of the builds that i could think of next up we have infiltrator now this skill is actually meta meta for the game like meta for the game is butterfly infiltrator and alchemic vapors but honestly i think the skill first of all takes a long time to recharge the skill makes you invisible as long as you don't get hit if you get hit it uh, it uh, loses the invisibility but i don't know i just don't really uh, like the skill i think it's it like takes away the dynamic that you can have uh, with dual blades like when i play like when i'm I, I always want my stamina bar to be refilling while I'm playing uh, dual blades. If I'm sneaking around the map uh, searching for a easy kill to secure, that isn't really my thing, you know, like you can do you can do that with alchemic vapors. So yeah, that being said, like I do see infiltrator being useful definitely, but I don't know, I just think it's um it doesn't offer like it offers to here but I think other skills that have a way lower cooldown and actually do damage output not just make you invisible and kind of faster for a while have a way higher potential of uh, increasing your performance in a game. If you get me, if you understand me, like, like don't get me wrong, when I'm, when I'm in a battle, I do wish sometimes that I would have Infiltrator uh, just because you have that extra of your invisibility skills. Uh, but if you want to use those skills, you know, just call your horse and jump down from it. Uh, it also has a, like, a, like a faster cooldown. I think it's like 25 seconds or something like that. Uh, so yeah, that being said, like it's really hard for me to argue here because the infiltrator is meta and I'm totally against it. So if you want to play with it, if you want to use it, you know, go for it. But I just do not see the sense in having it and I just think there are other skills that are more useful and as I said if you want to use the invisibility skills you can use alchemical vapors or just jump down your horse okay next one alchemical vapors I think we already uh, said like enough from this it makes you invisible for three seconds it is very useful uh, I often use it in a combination with Marked for Death. Alchemical Vapors just uh, offers you the that knockdown. You know, the, I I really think that like that's the the most useful part I get from Alchemical Vapors, which is the knockdown, not not the attack. Uh, except it's if it's from you know, like a really low HP hero. Uh, I'm really looking to you know just knock down. You can knock down like two to three heroes. You can knock down. Uh, enemy units like it's it's really useful to have you know like kind of an extended uh, bonus that you can have i guess from alchemical uh, vapors i also i also use it to get uh, around the map uh, faster which i think is very important like the faster you can get from a to b uh, can be really decisive as i'm sure you bros already know uh, so yeah, Alchemical Vapors I would really recommend, I think it's uh, a must-have, uh, similar to Butterfly, but uh, more important, definitely more important. Great Thunderbolt, which is the bomb. Now, this skill for my playstyle is very useful in death matches and that being said is, I mean that if you, you are using shurikens, uh, you could switch them out for Thunderbolt because uh, honestly I do not use shurikens in death matches because they don't deal that much damage they push you forward uh, you're vulnerable and ranged heroes will target you Thunderbolt however enables you to incapacitate uh, one hero or maybe even five like I had situations where I dazed five heroes with one Thunderbolt and the enemy team just smashed them 
And imagine being as an assassin and playing support and have like 20 assists and 5 kills. That's crazy. I really think this skill uh, offers kind of a different playstyle to dual blades. And on top of uh, concussing your enemies, it also makes them take 20% more damage for 4 seconds. Which is more than Glaive offers, uh, which is, if I remember correctly, 15% more damage after its ulti. This skill is also, as we said before, good to pair with uh, Skylark, which does a shit ton of damage, and or the Dance of Death. Last skill and the ulti you should be using is Marked for Death. Now for this ulti, it's really, really, really freaking important that you research it to the third level because at the start you have a 60 second cooldown and at the end you have a 45 second cooldown which is absolutely freaking ridiculous along with that you have uh, 1.5k more damage and let's be honest that it that's gonna be game changing for anyone along with that it offers 525 percent of your base slashing damage plus 6k of your slashing damage which is uh, very nice. I mainly use the skill, however, to kind of get that extra damage in. But I, uh, many times I use it to incapacitate a hero because you knock them down for a very, very long time. Uh, many times I incapacitate one hero and move on to the other one. Like it's a really good skill if you ask me to kind of control uh, the area. You can also use it... Uh, to go run away like if you are going to die do not be afraid to use marked for death to just bolt away uh give you that extra four seconds for your alchemic vapors to recharge pop them off and just say bow chow bow to the enemy hero that is chasing you here you can also see the current loadout that i'm using is butterfly for q shurikens for e Alchemic Vapors for R and of course marked for death as an ulti. Okay now strategy wise, as dual blades you should, depending on which units you have, first of all uh, I would really recommend having javelins with dual blades because uh, normally you are stationed behind the enemy line, actually sorry friendly line, looking for opportunities, throwing shurikens, which is really nicely paired with javelins the main reason i'm recommending javelins uh, especially imperial javelins is because you can use marked for death on any hero and dash away immediately target him with the javelins and he's just gone he's he's just a good night man he's, he's dead that is a very good way to just uh, keep securing kills like throughout the game like if you only focus on that the entire game you're definitely gonna have like five kills or more if your javelins don't die and that is really modest uh, actually, no, that's really not that much for dual blades to only have five kills in a matched battle. The javelin strategy is definitely something that I use. As I said before, with skills I also use, uh, if uh, we are pushing, I use Marked for Death just to disable a hero. Uh, especially if I don't have an opportunity to really use it. Uh, because disabling a hero for that long is really good. Like, you gotta... You gotta calculate that you're taking away all the damage or support that he could have done in those five seconds uh you're letting the other hero see him being cc'd and they can't do anything to help uh, him and they may actually with withdraw back just because it's three against three it's really 50 50 and if you just incapacitate a hero and still be in the battle while he is on the ground that may be the pivoting point for the battle and you're going to end up securing i don't know like 40 50 unit kills for your team which is massive if you do that like five times a game other strategy i use is uh using the shurikens like especially if we, let's say a gate if we are pushing in a gate i am going to be in the front line the entire freaking time throwing the shurikens and annoying the hell out of the enemy in the front line because i i know exactly that he is going to try to come for me and when he does he is going to die because everyone sees an assassin especially the newish players or even some mediocre players that are just have a bad day or something uh they are going to go for you and they're going to regret it uh as long as you know what you're doing of course so that is definitely a big part of the strategy for dual blades which is basically baiting the enemy heroes 
into dying. For me personally, as dual blades, I tend to stick with the blob, if you know what I mean. Uh, because you, you, you are the hero that can chase down uh, other heroes the most uh, efficiently. And if the blob is moving, and uh, let's be honest, everyone is moving or running away from it, especially if they are not organized, uh, regrouping in the central capture point to defend from there. Like you can really do a lot by chasing down those retreating heroes and extending their respawn time. Also another strategy I like to do is when there's like a manageable uh, blob of uh, heroes and allies fighting, I really like to kind of circle around with uh, the dual blades just to freak them out, you know, because if, if you see a dual blade and you see him circling around, you're gonna kind of lose focus on what you're doing on the front line and kind of watch out on your back more. And uh, the reason I do that is because I draw away attention from my allies. You're basically just a freaking wolf like circling uh, around them. Sooner or later one guy is gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna take him on, I have to save my team, you know. And you can use Mark of Death on him, that's gonna throw him down. And immediately, like most of the times, other heroes are going to come to help him because they see, oh, it's just one hero, an assassin, we can take him out fast. After that you use alchemical vapors, bail out, by that your team has already pushed into their units uh, and by the time the enemy heroes go back into that front line you reappear and repeat, 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 annoy and just make the enemy team uh, lose uh, their minor battles which are very freaking important to winning Conqueror's Blade. I, have, I haven't said this till now, I should actually make a quick tips video about this because this is really important. Like in Conqueror's Blade you should really focus on those tiny victories. Like if you see a blue or better unit or heck it, even a green unit and if you're close to them and you know you can take them on with your unit, like if you want to understand me, like if you have Berserkers which are 245 leadership and you go with your blob against the enemy blob and charge them in and they die getting 30 kills. You wasted 245 leadership. If you would like go around your blob and or patrol the map like searching for heroes that are just calling their units uh, to the battlefield without being attended. If you would go with your zerkers there and kill off a blue unit that is 180 leadership and then a green unit that is 110 leadership and then join the blob flanking them causing 50 kills that's you know those two minor victories did a lot because you took out those units those units are not uh, coming back and that's a lot of leadership that you took away from the enemy team and I honestly think a lot of people don't uh, understand that Conqueror's Blade is all about <clears throat> making those little <clears throat> tiny victories uh, matter because the enemy team at least uh, as far as normal matches go only have a certain amount of units and if you manage to take uh, Falcon Eddies out, Shield Maidens, uh, any gold unit that's really gonna hurt the enemy team because that is like half of the leadership points of one uh, enemy hero. So last we have pros and cons that are for uh, dual blades. I can imagine there are many pros and many cons uh, smaller than this, but I didn't really wanna go into uh, uh, describing all of them. I think we uh, covered a lot of them already, uh, talking about the skill strategy and etc. But the pros I managed to find with this class are that you don't need to fully unlock the class to be good like <clears throat> as you can see i'm not fully unlocked at all uh, i don't know if you checked uh, my other videos where i was even less unlocked than i am currently uh i, I managed to get like 16 13 kills like you can just bomb the enemy team just by being good patient opportunistic uh and you really don't need to have like maxed out ulti, maxed out abilities, yada yada yada. So that's a really good side to any class if you ask me. Uh, the other uh, pro is that the good ulti that you're going to be using is already unlocked. Uh, which is awesome. It's really a pain with Spear and Glaive where you kind of have to play it for I don't know how long. Just to unlock the good ulti and then you find out, oh this class doesn't really you know work for me. <laughs> Good job wasting a wick. It offers high survivability due to stealth 
and speed like dual blades is one of the rarer uh, classes that manages to get out of pretty sticky situations just because of the speed and the stealth so that being said it does have pretty high survivability like based on the fact that it can literally walk in enemy lines and not not be noticed you know uh, but it is very squishy uh, so that kind of balances it out but it does still have high survivability just because of that ability to run away or sneak in or yada 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 uh, you do have a lot of hero control uh, similar to Polax and by that I mean that you can control the hero you can keep him on the ground uh, but I think you have more than Polax because your ulti uh, kind of keeps them on the ground for the same uh, time but you're faster you're much faster you're invisible it's really harder for the uh, enemies to counter you uh, your block is less significantly uh, less than uh, polaxis but uh, that doesn't change the fact that you have a lot of control against your enemy heroes i also think as a pro this class can be very decisive uh, if you manage to get eight kills by your own which is awesome and manage to secure eight more kills by the help of your uh, team is going to be very decisive because you take a lot of heroes out out of the game for a very long time and that that's one of the key factors that you should be focused uh, in sieges and field battles actually only in sieges uh, in order to win the game another pro that I would give it is actually a very high skill cap no, dual blades is very freaking hard to play man like you really gotta get used to it like after like if you're playing any other class you just just forget about it you know just forget maybe pike is kind of the closest i guess because it's also squishy if you're playing at full agility but dual blades is really hard to play and that also means when you know how to play it you're going to be really freaking good like you can't say the same for some other classes like they're hard to play uh, but when you master it you're here where with dual blades with dual blades you can be like freaking there man like you know that's really a good thing uh, because if you main dual blades if you learn and learn and learn and learn it uh, you're going to be just getting better and better with time which is lovely you know you're not gonna stagnate in a specific uh, uh, skill area now the cons are uh, the class is very squishy as we said before it's very fast though very tough to control like you need to have really good situational awareness you kind of have to predict where the enemy is going to be you really gotta be fast you really gotta memorize your buttons it's like well oh, like you really gotta think when you play it you know the another con is that you get targeted by ranged heroes which is an absolutely bummer like if we are in a combat whatever a clash uh and if i get targeted by an enemy uh ranged hero like constantly i am going to eventually focus them down and just take them out i'm not even gonna bother doing anything else because if you're gonna bother doing anything else you're just gonna have arrows going in your head the entire time and Doom Blades does not have a good time with arrows or bullets another con is that you cannot stand and fight and by that i mean if your units get ganked you're not gonna save them like with glaive nodachi short sword uh, musket uh, they're dead there's nothing you can do uh, the, the only thing you can do is throw some shurikens into them maybe disable uh, their hero maybe take out their hero that's probably your best bet but if they get pinned down by a bigger force they're they're just gone you, you should just run away that's that's basically the only thing you can do it also has a very high learning curve it's not uh, just it doesn't just have a high skill cap but this, the the journey you need to do to get to that skill cap is like this you know I, I'm, I'm not even here i'm not like like here i'm just starting to grasp the concept of dual blades and it's already kicking ass i can't imagine what people are doing when they're like you know like really 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 pro and another con is that you're really you are dependent on your troops uh, they are not dependent on you which means uh, you really gotta use them to complement uh, your 
hero which kind of takes away a lot of the troops that you could have used i don't know shields are gonna be a no-no for you uh i mean you can use them but uh, they're just not going to be as effective like the most effective troops for you are javelins berserkers uh shock infantry that can go in do a lot of damage and go out definitely not any defensive units cavalry i don't really see much uh, sense in using them as well you should really focus as a dual blade on uh using skirmishers and a assault troop in order to get you know that uh, bonus damage taken so you can you know scale up higher in the ranking board thanks to the new ranking system and that is everything that I wanted to cover for Dual Blades. Let me know what you think about the class in general in the comments below. If you have your opinion, if you want to share something that I probably missed out, leave me a like. It's going to help me out a ton. You have no idea how much it's going to help me out. YouTube loves likes. If you give me a like, that's going to make me reach more people in the future. So yeah, that's really going to help me out. And as always, guys... See you next time. Everything I touch turn cold. Need no introduction because they know. Bring it more. I hit the lot on my model. Roll up gelato and throttle. A couple models to Kyle who fucking brought up the bottle. Some gone ham. This ain't even luck all planned. Y'all know who the fucks I am. Burning bucks, smoke bands. Always been the MO since the start of this. And now I'm on a mission like a martyr.